Sugar Bear is actually endorsed by lots of famous people and even influencers like Kylie Jenner, Kardashian, James Charles. Unfortunately, I heard that James Charles actually marketed Sugar Bear gummies to, let's say, the more the younger population, like kids and teenagers. Now, I really don't want to get involved in the drama that's recently going on with him. I just feel like the public needs to know what's the ingredients inside these gummies and the interactions behind the product. And it makes me sick to my stomach. Like you would market these kind of supplements to an audience that don't know anything. Don't, they don't know any better. If you're a parent, please watch the full video so that you can decide if the product is right for you and your family. I want to stress that even though a product is super popular, doesn't mean that it's guaranteed to work, nor is it good for you. I know Sugar Bear is so cute. It comes in one of these gummies, it's chewable, and it's really hard to resist. I know that. And that's why it's so attractive to the younger population. Gosh, I remember my mom used to give me the, the, one of those chewable gummies when I was younger. And I actually would kind of spit it out and say, Mom, I'm not taking this. <laughs> I was so stubborn even as a kid. And I guess I was a pharmacist at a very, very young age. With that being said though, sometimes these celebrities don't know really what's the ingredients behind all these supplements. And social proof doesn't mean that the product is right for every single consumer out there. And as a healthcare professional, I got your back. There are three parts again to this video. We're gonna talk about the 13 active ingredients in Sugar Bear hair product, okay? This is solely for the hair one. In four categories like mechanism of action, the health benefits, the side effects, and the interactions, both with drug and with food. Stay until the very end because I'm also going to discuss about six different questionable combinations in this formula. Because I did something similar to this, I have another video talking about Tati's Halo Beauty hair, skin, and nail supplement as well. So we're actually going to do the third part, the cross comparison between the two. And then I would give you my final recommendation or verdict. So grab some popcorn, maybe a drink too, because it's gonna be a very long video. And I feel that it's necessary for me to include all these information. I'm a pharmacist and welcome to Track MTM. Before we get started, okay, I really, really wanted to share this with you, okay? The side note before we dive deep into the ingredients. I hate it, okay? Hate it very much because OTC products, supplements, are usually not FDA approved, right? But companies out there try to make it sound like it is by saying things like, our products are manufactured in an FDA approved facilities, labs, etc. that uses all the FDA guidelines, okay? So why do I despise that statement so, so much? Well, because it's very straightforward. The product is either FDA approved or it's not. There's no in between or gray area. Most of the time, supplements are not FDA approved. So stop trying to fool or trick your consumers into thinking it is. It's funny because the way they market FDA approved. Just because you make it in an approved lab doesn't mean your product is actually FDA approved. Facility over here approved, your product over here not approved. Even if you make it in that place, you can't really jump into conclusion and sugarcoat things. That's not how it works. I just get so irritated though when they try to trick my patients like that to stop. Please stop making things sound better than what reality really is. If anything, it's actually a requirement that they have to produce supplements in a facility that's approved by the FDA. Otherwise, they can't sell the products in the US. So it's not like companies are going out of their way, okay? Going the extra mile 
to make it happen because it's actually a requirement from the government. <laughs> and that's why I feel like it's my duty as a pharmacist to warn you about these things. Now, if you're already subscribed to my channel, you know how passionate I am about informing the consumers about the potential harmful effects of supplements. And if you're new to my channel, let me just reiterate this. My channel is not about reviews, not about testing the products. It's all about looking at all the ingredients from a professional perspective. And coming up with like a list of interactions that you need to know, it's never about which brand it is, who's promoting the product. We're talking about influencers and famous people here or how popular, trendy the product is. If I see a problem, I would definitely speak out and kind of warn you about them. And that's my promise to you guys, the viewers. It's unfortunate because you actually don't know what you don't know. So you wouldn't know what kind of questions to ask. I understand that. And I don't ever want you to be in that situation. With that being said though, what you don't know can actually harm you in the long run. And that's the reason why I build my own consulting company so that I get the chance to kind of sit down one-on-one -on -one with my patient and discuss like pretty much everything that they're taking with an emphasis on their mental health, diet, and exercise as well. Please check out my website in the description box below if you're interested. YouTube is just one of the many things that I do as a healthcare professional. I do have other avenues that I do reach out to my patients and interact with them on a daily basis. Just a side note, even though I say there are 13 ingredients in the Sugar Bear Hair Supplement, I will not cover five of the ingredients, such as vitamin C, vitamin D, vitamin B6, biotin, and zinc. Why? Because I already discussed these five ingredients in a different video that has to do with um, Tati Halo Beauty Supplement. I'll link that video as well but because of basically i would go over the same thing the same drug interactions i thought it would be re kind of redundant so that's why i'm skipping over those if you like i say if you do want to check out all the information please refer to the other video so that leaves us with eight different or new ingredients i would say that i would cover in depth in this video Let's start with vitamin A. Now vitamin A is fat soluble. Different forms of vitamin A are collectively known as retinoids. Vitamin A is required for pretty much, let's say growth, vision, bone development, reproduction, self proliferation, self differentiation, immune function, and the integrity of the mucosal and epithelial services. Vitamin A also regulates your genes. As for benefits, it's possibly effective for measles, cataracts, breast cancer, postpartum diarrhea, and especially for skin conditions, right? We know that it's in a lot of skincare products to kind of help with the wrinkles, the fine lines, more of the anti-aging properties. As for side effects, now if you're taking high doses of vitamin A, it might increase mortality risk. It may cause like various dermatological symptoms, including like if you use a lot of like retinoids products, I'm sure you know, like dry patches of your skin, dry lips as well, kind of like the scaly kind, itchy skin, skin redness, pigmentation, skin peeling, brittle nails, gingivitis, hair loss, diarrhea, nausea, abdominal discomfort, anorexia, vomiting, headaches, sweating, dizziness, and blur vision can also occur. Drug interaction for vitamin A, I have a huge list right here. Taking high doses of vitamin A in combinations with let's say hepatotoxic drugs, so drugs that are bad for your, um, for your liver, can kind of increase the risk of liver disease. So let's say Tylenol, over-the-counter that you actually see, amiodarone, cordarone, carbamazepine, tegretol, isonacid, methotrexate, methadopa, aldomet. If you're already taking retinoid, let's say isotretinone, accutane, or tretinone product, do not double up on this, okay? There's no reason to take vitamin A supplements and it's derivative. I mean, it's just gonna have additive effects. 
so you're probably gonna get dry skin even more. Benign intracranial hypertension can also occur with let's say tetracycline antibiotic. And vitamin A of course in high doses can also lead to the risk of bleeding let's say with warfarin or coumadin if you're taking up like a blood thinner. And interactions with bile acids sequestrin like cholesteramine or questran. Cholesterol or cholestid can also reduce the absorption of the fat soluble vitamin which is vitamin A in this case. And women taking oral contraceptives have a higher plasma levels of vitamin A than non-users but may have a lower liver storage of the vitamin. Mineral oil also has been reduced Ported to reduce the absorption of all fat soluble vitamins. And finally, oral stat, Zenicar or Ally used for weight loss can decrease the fat soluble vitamins absorption as well because unfortunately, dietary fat actually increase your vitamin A absorption. Next, we have vitamin E, also another fat-soluble vitamin with eight different forms of isomers. Each one has a different role. Major function really for vitamin E is chain-breaking antioxidants that prevent the formation of free radicals. For health benefits, vitamin E, you got more of the cardiovascular benefits. Let's say angina, stroke, AFib, heart failure, hypertension. You also got prevention of cancer and prostate, dementia as well, Parkinson's disease, night cramps, restless leg syndrome, and epilepsy. And possibly anemia as well. As for side effects, we're looking at nausea, diarrhea, intestinal cramps, fatigue, weakness, headache, blur vision, and even like a rash. But generally, vitamin E is very well tolerated. <laughs> I always have a huge list of drug interactions, so bear with me. Vitamin E interferes with a chelating agent, so when you use them for like chemotherapy, because it reduces the oxidative stress, bleeding risk is more likely to happen with vitamin E if you're taking, let's say, over 800 milligram per day, which could inhibit the platelet aggregation and antagonize the effects of vitamin K, dependent clogging factors. So you're looking at drugs like aspirin, clopidogrel, Plavix, warfarin, coumadin, noxaparin, Lovenox, heparin, clodipine, ticlid. However, vitamin E increases the absorption of cyclosporins. So you need to monitor in order to reduce the risk of toxicity. It increases the metabolisms of drugs that utilize the CYP3A4 enzymes, such as calcium channel blockers, we got diltiazem, verapamil, cardipine, and you got chemo agents like topicide, paclitaxel, vincristine, vinblastin, antifungals like ketoconazole, iconazole, fentanyl, glucocorticoids, losartan, cozar, fluoxetine, Prozac for depression, midazolam or Versed, omeprazole, prilosec, ondansetron, zofran, propanolol, indorol, and over-the-counter like Allegra. Again, also with oil staff for weight loss because it decreases the absorption of fat-soluble vitamins. But then again, you can try to separate it out um, apart for two hours to see if it can help with the absorption. Next, we have vitamin B12. Now, this is a water-soluble vitamin required for nucleoprotein synthesis, cell reproduction, normal growth, and especially if you're a vegan or vegetarian, definitely this source of vitamin comes from your daily diet. You usually get from a variety of food group, let's say fish, shellfish, red meat, um, eggs, stuff like that. So if you don't have these kind of nutrition, you definitely need to take a vitamin B supplements. That's basically the, the only thing I would recommend because 
typically when you have a deficiency or you have a medical condition that's the only time i would recommend taking additional vitamins vitamin b can help for like let's say heart disease again infertility diabetes diabetic neuropathy memory loss osteoporosis tendonitis immunosuppression even sleep depression and like irritable bowel syndrome diarrhea asthma allergies h related macular degeneration even canker sore or so they claim and vitamin b is generally well tolerated watch out for allergic reaction drug reactions for vitamin b12 we got folic acid folic acid can mask vitamin b12 deficiency and potassium supplements can potentially reduce the absorption of vitamin b12 as well due to the acidification process and thus reducing the intrinsic factor i don't recommend taking potassium and vitamin b12 supplements together this is also a big one vitamin c which is in this formula can destroy okay i repeat destroy vitamin b12 resulting in a lower blood level of vitamin b12 again you can separate it out for about two hours but honestly like how can you avoid that when the formulation comes with two of these ingredients all in one, in one pill you just can't and of course metformin can also reduce serum vitamin b12 and folic acid level did i mention excessive alcohol intake lasting longer than two weeks can actually also reduce vitamin b12 absorption from the gi tract so your gastrointestinal tract next we got folic acid which is also known as vitamin b9 Folic acid reduces the damage to the DNA and prevents like let's say replication errors. Any kind of deficiencies that might disturb cell cycling induces cell apoptosis and increase the rate of cell death. Well that's like problematic cells that is. After folic acid is absorbed into your system, it's actually reduced to tetrahydrofolate and then enters the methylation cycle. Tetrahydrofolate is then converted into L-methylfolate. As for health benefits, folic acid can help with, let's say, anemia, preventing neural tube defects, low birth weight, preterm birth or pregnancy loss, miscarriages, oral cleft, autism. So if you're pregnant, most likely you're gonna need to get some kind of additional folic acid supplement. This is vital for the sake of your newborn or your baby because it's gonna help with the brain neural development so that's very essential to let's say fetal growth cognitive emotion motor skills and it's also good for let's say hypertension age related macular degeneration depression gingivitis and possibly stroke for side effects doses of five milligram per day can cause like abdominal cramps diarrhea and rash Let's say if you go up to 15 milligrams per day, it sometimes can alter, let's say, sleep patterns. You're gonna get like vivid dreams, irritability, overactivity, maybe some confusion going on, impaired judgment, okay? That's a very big one. Less intense uh, side effects, you could probably get like um, nausea, flatulence, or like you pass gas, that kind of bitter taste in your mouth allergic skin reaction, zinc depletion, which is also in this formula. You don't want to go that high anyway. Drug interactions. We got chemo drugs. So methotrexate exerts its cytotoxic effects by preventing the conversion of folic acid to the active form. So more doesn't mean it's better. And I would recommend checking with an oncologist, especially if you are going through chemotherapy. Folic acid can have like direct convulsant activity, kind of reversing the effects of, let's say, phenobarbital, worsening your seizures control. Also with like, let's say, primidone, phenytoin, dilantin, carbamazepine, tegretol, valproic acid, triamtinerine. It's a diuretic and is a folate antagonist that can prevent folic acid converting to its active form. Also reduces the folate absorption. You also got vitamin A derivatives like acutane, tretinone, esotretinone that reduces the serum levels of 
folic acid and then preventing patients from you know making their acne better and this is a big one especially for me and those of you who enjoy a great cup of green tea green tea actually decreases the activity of folic acid inhibits the enzyme dihydrofolate reductase activity this enzyme is essential in converting again folic acid to its active form tetrahydrofolate pentothenic acid, which is also known as vitamin B5. It's widely distributed in plants and animal tissues. For health benefits, we're looking at acne, alcoholism, allergies, hair loss, asthma, ADHD, autism, burning feet sensation, cardiac failure, copper tunnel syndrome. That's very interesting. Respiratory disorders, celiac disease, colitis, convulsions, dandruff, depression, diabetic neuropathy, immune function, athletic performance, or so they claim, gray hair, headache, insomnia, low blood pressure, multiple sclerosis, muscle cramps in the leg. So in large quantity, it can cause, let's say, diarrhea, and also associated with, let's say, itching, burning, skin irritation, eczema, skin dermatitis. Actually, I like this one, not much drug interaction. There's actually limited data on antibiotic therapy that might kind of produce changes in your intestinal microflora, or your gut bacteria is actually responsible for producing vitamin B5, which is the pantothenic acid. In general, you're gonna get less of the vitamin B5 in this case. Next, we got iodine. It's a non-metallic trace element with atomic number 53. <laughs> I know that's kind of nerdy. That's back in my chemistry days that I remember. Iodine is needed for thyroid. Thyroxine, which is T4. Thyronin, which is T3. Thyroid hormone is responsible for myelination in the development of central nervous system. As a result, iodine deficiency is associated with mental retardation. That can be very scary. Health benefits, we're looking at thyroid storm, hyperthyroidism, nodular goiter, radiation emergency, weight loss, preventing breast cancer, diabetes, cardiovascular disease, ocular disease, which is like your eyes, also sometimes it's used as an expectorant for like a say cough. Side effects, we got nausea, abdominal pain, headache, again, that's always a big one. Diarrhea, metallic taste. And side effects definitely can be avoided or minimized if you avoid like let's say quick increase in dosage in terms of strength. Iodine has lots of drug interactions. Let's just start with ACE inhibitors, which you normally use for, let's say, blood pressure because your potassium levels will significantly increase. So you definitely want to monitor, let's say, potassium, especially if you're taking additional like potassium supplements. It's not a good thing. We're looking at midazapril, lotensin, captopril, caputin, enalapril, vasotec. Falsinopril or monopril, lisinopril, like Prinavil, Zestril, Univask, Quinapril or Acupril, Remapril or Altase, and Trandolapril or Mavic. Same thing with ARBs. That's also another drug class that you can use for high blood pressure. Again, it's going to significantly increase your potassium levels. Losartan, Kozar, Valsartan, Diovan, Erpasartan, Avapro, Candisartan, Tell me Sartan or Micardis and other potassium sparing products, even with let's say spironolactone or aldactone. Lots of um, women use that for you know, prevent acne, not just with you know high blood pressure. Trimetinerine or Midamore. <laughs> That's one of my favorite. Midamore. And lots, lots of professionals don't know this, but I do. So I thought I warn you. Amiodarone or Cordarone can contains about 37.3%. I know that's very specific, but I just happen to know this, of iodine. So that can potentially increase your iodine levels with, in combination, I mean, it's probably gonna increase not only the side effects of iodine, 
but also like I mean amiodarone is a very dirty drug it doesn't play well with others so you've got to monitor a lot a lot of things okay and anything that can alter the plasma level of these medications you don't want to mess with next we got choline which is an essential nutrient related to the water-soluble vitamin B complex, folate, peroxidine, vitamin B12 as well, into the essential amino acid. So basically it's a component of cell membranes and required for the synthesis of phospholipids. Also, it's a precursor for acetylcholine, which is involved, again, very important in the brain development process, neurotransmission. Generally, choline is used for liver disease, chronic hepatitis, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, cirrhosis, hypercholesterolemia, depression, memory loss, Alzheimer's disease, dementia, schizophrenia, fetal alcohol spectrum disorder. Also use orally for let's say post-operative pain, delay in fatigue endurance during sports performance, preventing cancer, Tourette syndrome, ataxia, complex partial seizure, and asthma. For side effects, high intake can cause low blood pressure, sweating, kind of like the fishy um, body odor, and gastrointestinal conditions, anorexia, nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. Again, drug interaction, I don't have a huge list. You want to take choline one hour before you take atropine because it can decrease the acetylcholine concentration in your brain. In large doses of choline, let's say nine grams daily, can also worsen urinary incontinence. And the last ingredient on the list is inositol. It's basically a sugar alcohol found in food. Instead, it's now referred to as the pseudo vitamin. With like nine different stereoisoforms, mild inositol in the endogenous form plays a significant role in formations of the membrane reactions and most abundant in your CNS. With weak lipo tropic activity it can help to kind of like move the fat out of liver and intestinal cells health benefits this one can help with let's say metabolic syndrome we got diabetes like diabetic neuropathy hypertension your high cholesterol also panic disorder anxiety depression schizophrenia bipolar disorder alzheimer's disease ADD, even OCD, trichotillomania, which is like hair pulling, post-traumatic stress disorder, insomnia, cancer, lithium-induced side effects, psoriasis, hair growth, even elevated levels of testosterone. For side effects, we got nausea, diarrhea, tiredness, headache, dizziness, perhaps insomnia as well, allergic reaction, agitation, and feeling of thirst. As for drug interactions, inositol can lower your blood glucose level and also your hemoglobin A1C. For those of you who are diabetic, you definitely know what I'm talking about. Or we call it hypoglycemia. You might need a dose adjustment when it comes to your anti-diabetic agents. Um, if you do want to take it together with this, we're looking at glimepiride, glyburide, metformin, insulin, actos, avandia, and also phytic acid that can interfere with minerals, calcium, zinc, iron. Zinc is actually in this formula. Congratulations for making it to the very end because now I'm going to go over about six questionable combinations that should not be in this formula in the first place okay this is one of my favorite part when i get to warn you about these problematic things because if i don't then you wouldn't know otherwise right so that's why it makes me excited that i'm passing on this knowledge to you so you can decide the first one is vitamin b12 and folic acid so together these two ingredients, folic acid would mask the symptoms of vitamin B12 deficiency. The second one is vitamin B12 with vitamin C. Vitamin C can actually destroy vitamin B12. So in one formula, 
vitamin B12 is not gonna do you any good if you don't get any benefits from it because vitamin C over here is just gonna destroy it, okay? No more vitamin B12 for you. So why are you paying for it? I don't know. I know citol and zinc. I just briefly mentioned earlier, it's gonna interfere with the absorptions of your minerals overall. Minerals are just as important as your regular vitamins, even though it's in a different category. Those are three things that, you know, include all the um, eight different ingredients that I mentioned. Remember the five that I didn't go over because I already went over in a different video? Well, those five ingredients also are included in this formula, so it's going to have drug interactions as well. Here we go. Biotin in vitamin B5, which is the pantothenic acid. Biotin and vitamin B5, they basically share a transporter. It's called the sodium dependent multivitamin transporter, or also known as SMVT. In combination, it's gonna reduce the absorption of both. Okay, typically I see it reducing the absorption of one ingredient over another, but no. In this case, you're gonna get less of both, both vitamin B5 and also less of biotin. So I don't know, like, do they just cancel each other out at this point? Who knows, right? Zinc actually has a drug interaction with vitamin A, which I mentioned. Clinical evidence suggests that zinc supplements can increase the plasma level of retinoids, so which is vitamin A derivative. But you're thinking, well, isn't that good that I'm getting more vitamin A? Not necessarily, because that's going to induce more side effects. Let's say dry skin, patches of your skin, scaliness, you know, you don't want too much of it can increase your chance of getting a reaction. Last one, we got zinc and vitamin D. Now, I didn't mention both of these ingredients, but they're both in there. Preliminary data suggests that vitamin D is involved in the zinc absorption process. In terms of absorption, again, if it's gonna increase, it's gonna decrease, like we don't know where it is. I mean, it might react differently um, because all of us, right, even if we take the same pill, we're gonna react differently. Our absorption is gonna be different because that's how our body reacts to the medication or the supplement. As promised, I'm gonna do a quick comparison to the Tati Halo Beauty supplement. Basically, rivalries at this point. They basically work for the same purpose. They just add, take away some of the ingredients and call it done. Essentially, it's just a multivitamin. So the big question is, should you take both? Heck no. Please don't take both. Why do you need both? Like I mentioned, five different overlapping ingredients, especially with vitamins like the fat soluble vitamins like vitamin A, vitamin D, E, and K can accumulate in your body. It's not good if you have too much of it. It can lead to toxicity. Sugar Bear hair came out first and it has about six questionable combinations versus Tati, Halo Beauty. I think in my other video, I mentioned about four questionable combinations. Not like one is better than the other. Do I have a preference on one versus the other? Nope, because both are problematic. It's not like, oh, Tati's only has four questionable things, so I'm just gonna go with that versus the six over here. No, that's not how it works. So I wouldn't recommend you something I don't believe in. Simple as that. Are these drug interactions or food interactions gonna kill you? I don't know. It has to do with more of the absorption issues and how the ingredients prevent one another from working together effectively when they're present in the same formula. From a pharmacist perspective, I'm thinking, why bother? Why bother paying for them if they have issues in the formulation? So let's wrap things up. There are five overlapping ingredients, which I mentioned before, vitamin C, vitamin D, vitamin B6, biotin, and zinc. The exclusive ingredients in sugar bears only include vitamin A, vitamin E, vitamin B12, folic acid, which is vitamin B9, pantothenic acid, which is vitamin B5, iodine, choline, and inositol so eight total. We're talking about exclusive ingredients that are in Tati Halo Beauty supplement. We're looking at vitamin B1, B2, copper, 
manganese, catalase, rosehip powder extract, MSM, saw, palmetto, amla, grapeseed extract, pumpkin seed powder, ceramide RX, horsetail, astaxanthin, L-glutathione, alpha lipoic acid. Gosh, I'm just so scared by just saying these ingredients out loud. They're just too many. More doesn't mean better. More means more chances for drug interactions in my eyes. Another thing that I want to highlight is that Sugar Bear obviously has sugar in it and Tati Halo Beauty doesn't or she claims it doesn't. On a different level though, some viewers actually even ask me if I would recommend this for children. And I was like, are you kidding me? You've got to be kidding. I don't even recommend this for adults let alone children. Like if I have kids or nephews or nieces, I wouldn't give this to them. Cause I honestly don't know what's gonna do. I mean, it might work, but it might not. But just looking at the formula with all the problematic issues and the, like the drug interaction stuff, no, no thanks. Absolutely not. Have you seen the ingredients? I mean, it's crazy. The pediatric population is so different than the adult population. With any kind of uncertainty, you definitely want to avoid in children. So please don't risk it. Don't test it out on your child. Don't give your child anything you're not sure about. And I'm telling you this from a professional standpoint, it's very scary because there's not much room for error when it comes to overdosing a kid. And I know lots of parents, even with the best intention, sometimes end up harming their kids. Again, circling back to what they don't know that can be harmful. After reviewing all the essential information in the drug interaction, it makes me feel so sad that the supplement companies would use famous people or celebrities. Of course they pay them, but using more of the star power to advertise these products to the consumer. From a marketing and business standpoint, like yes, I get it. It works very well and it's very powerful in persuading you to purchase the product. However, as a pharmacist, as a professional, I feel like you shouldn't promote any kind of product you're not sure about. And knowing all the ins and outs of the ingredients, especially drug interactions, but I do have a problem with marketing supplements to kids that don't know any better. I mean, if you do it to adults, they can probably go and do more research and decide for themselves. But for kids, they're just gonna be like, oh, I wanna take that gummy without knowing like, you know, what's behind the scene. So make sure you get the whole picture of the ingredients. As a consumer, do your research before buying any kind of supplement. Alrighty, thank you so much for tuning in. Please let me know in the comments which supplements or brand ingredients you like me to review. And from the past videos, you know, a lot of people enjoy the controversial topics that I bring up. So just let me know. I love your feedback. If you like, then subscribe and like this video. I would appreciate it very much. So have a wonderful day. Bye-bye now.